Please turn your attention to the word provided by Dr. King. Come on and put your hands together if you believe that God is. Come on and put those hands together. Close those eyes and just go before the Lord in worship and praise if you know God is. You're all in all. You're all and all. Hallelujah. Gracious God, we come in the name of Jesus to bless your name and to honor you. We lift you up and we praise you and we thank you that you are indeed our all and all. Ah, God, we bless you. Yeah, we bless you. We bless you. Yeah, we thank you. We, we, we experience your presence right now. We thank you for being right here in our midst. We thank you for the assurance of your grace. We thank you that you are with us even as we go through the valley of the shadow of death, the death of loved ones, of employment, of health, the death of dreams. God, you are with us. And we know, Lord, because of the hope in Jesus, that those things can be resurrected. And we thank you. Those dreams can be resurrected. Those hopes are resurrected. And for that, God, we say thank you. Now, Lord, as we stand here for this sermonic moment, we pray for your anointing. We pray for your presence. We pray for your message to go forth. We pray you open the hearts and the minds of your people to receive your word and their lives will be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. We thank God for that um, song. The praise team, you've just blessed us this morning. you just blessed us this morning. And truly, I um, give honor to God and thank God for today. Thank God for all that are here today. Give honor to our pastor, our um, our senior pastor, Dr. Carl King, and for all the ministers and everyone that is here today, just come one more time, give God praise. If you are thankful, yes, and we do thank God for that praise team. Could we turn to Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5? Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. When you have found it, please stand, as has become our custom to give honor to the reading of the word. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And it reads as thus, in the New King James Version of the Bible, it says, And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he, talking about Jesus, preached the word to them. Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic son, your sins are forgiven. And we want to take our thought from verse 4 and 5 when it says, when they had broken through... They let down the bed in which the paralytic was lying and vibe when Jesus saw their faith. And if you could go back to the original or the first slide with the title on it, we want to take today as our, um, if the audiovisual could take me back to the first slide, and it says, um, the title slide that says, How to Build Breakthrough Faith. How to Build Breakthrough Faith. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> As I've been reflecting on just the things that are going on around us today, I'm convinced that we live in some very uh, stressful times and we face what I call growth-inducing situations. And you may want to write that down, growth-inducing situations. I don't call them problems. I don't call them, um, you know, challenges, so to speak. I call them growth-inducing because they induce our growth. They they um, cause and force us to grow up and to grow in our relationship with the Lord. These situations cause us to draw upon our faith in God and rely upon the Lord like never before. These situations that are growth-inducing and stressful often reveal just how much we are not in control of the situations we face or the situations around us. For instance, unexpected medical diagnoses, inexplicable cancers, liver disease, 
autoimmune disorders, mental health illnesses, especially those caused by brain chemistry. We don't understand those. We don't cause them. We don't even have control of them. Uh, a friend of mine, as I told you last year, uh, having some stomach and abdominal pain, and she, when she went in, they took out her um, gallbladder and found that the gallbladder was cancerous. They said that it's, I can't even remember one in like millions of percentage of people that even get gallbladder cancer. It was a rare, but it had spread to her litter, liver and within six, seven months she was gone. Inexplicable caused then her family and friends, those of us, to get to another level of just seeking God. Unexpected job losses. Uh, 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 corporate, you know, it's amazing to me that the jobs reports say that we're at an unemployment rate of about 4, 4.5, low as in I don't know how many years. But I know a lot of people who are unemployed and have been long-term unemployed or underemployed. And they use fancy words like reduction in forces or reorganization. Downsizing was in my day, and now they tend to use right-sizing. All are fancy words that leave a person without a job after 5, 10, 20, 30 years of loyal, high-performing service. Growth-inducing situations. <laughs> Growth-inducing. Long-term um, underemployment, as I said, because of the market conditions, some people are not able to find jobs in their field in spite of the fact that they have either the education and training for the field or they have long-term experience that qualifies them and it becomes inexplicable. Why is this happening? Growth-inducing situations. Unexpected effects of aging. Joint deterioration. You wonder, what is this happening? Lower back issues. I began to have some lower back and sciatic nerve pain and as I went to the doctor, he said, oh, you've got to understand that back Issues are the common colds of the skeletal system. In other words, you live long enough, everybody at some point is going to have some type of lower back issue because we use it, we sit, we stand, it puts pressure on it. I said, well, why didn't somebody tell me about this before, right? Many of us <clears throat> heard older loved ones complain about Arthur, right? <clears throat> and sciatica, and we didn't think much about it until it started happening to us. And these days, young people are not immune to these inexplicable situations as one school after another becomes a target of seemingly random gun violence. We scurry hard to act to do something because we want to feel like we're in control but then get frustrated and some fall into depression and sadness when we can't turn these situations around on our own. What's more, these situations can and can be and are overwhelming, and if we're not careful, we'll get stuck in our own mindsets and thinking because we can't think our way out of this trouble. In the Western society and the educated the way we are, we think that if we just think hard enough, we plan long enough, we get the right formula, the five steps to healthy living, the seven steps to you name it, and we think that in a matter of time, we should be out of this situation. <clears throat> we live in a microwave age in which we pop dinners into the microwave and in seven minutes, the baked potato was baked. In the old days, we put it in the oven for a good half hour, 45 minutes, but now the baked potato is baked in seven minutes. And so we think the situations that we really should keep on the altar that our parents and forebears kept on the altar days and years at a time, we want after a good three weeks, it should be done and it should be fixed. And we should not still be going through this, nor should we still be praying about this. Because we've fallen for the myth that there's quick answers in this society. And to really have a breakthrough faith, a faith that allows you to break through, it takes time, it takes perseverance, and it takes you walking faithfully with the Lord in a way that you grow up and grow up into him. Because sometimes that microwave thinking really is evidence of an immature thinking. And our flesh wanting to be out of this situation quicker then we actually are going to be out of it. Do I have any witnesses in here today? So when it doesn't turn out the way we want or when we want it, then um, those feelings of being overwhelmed come. It causes us to get stuck, paralyzed, frozen, um, and it causes us to feel blocked in our ability to see and get to the Lord 
who has the answers for us. We end up not feeling like we can pray or we want to pray anymore. And really, prayer is really about a relationship with God such that there's this ongoing communication and commune with God. It's not just to ask God for things. And it's God has promised us to be with us in the time of trouble. God did not promise that everything would be perfect in our life. But what God promised us is that while we lived in this sinful, broken world, we were going to have trouble and tribulation. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer or be encouraged. I have overcome the world. And if you are in Christ and you are a believer walking with Christ, that overcoming power is also in you and you can get through it, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get through it overnight. Jesus promised us that, uh, uh, that he would be with us, that he would never leave us nor forsake us, but he did not promise us that life would be perfect. And so consequently, we've got to recognize when we begin to feel a little paralyzed, we begin to feel a little stuck, we've got to examine what's going on inside of us and examine what's going on around us and begin to make that shift or that adjustment in our faith, in our believing. So uh, um, as we think then even about <clears throat> the man in today's passage, uh, according to verse 3, he was a paralytic. We don't know the extent of his paralysis. We don't know how long he'd been paralyzed. We don't know whether or not he was paralyzed at birth. We don't know whether there was an inexplicable illness that came upon him or an accident. We don't know what the source of his paralysis was, but we do know that he was paralyzed, which meant that he could not move, and we don't even know the extent of the limbs that were affected by his paralysis. But the Bible does give us the sense that the situation was dire enough that he needed to get to Jesus. And that's the first lesson in our teaching today is that whatever situation you're in and going through, and even though you may feel a little stuck right now and a little paralyzed and not able and not even clear on what to do or how to move forward, please know that your situation warrants you getting to Jesus. Your situation warrants you seeking God as to a situation and to a strategy and to a solution for what you're going through. You have to get to Jesus. Again, so uh, he apparently, um, the next lesson is he apparently believed that Jesus could help him. That is where breakthrough faith begins in your belief or your belief system or your ability to believe. See, believe, let's just stay there for a moment. Believe is mentioned 19 times in the Old Testament and 124 times. 24 times in the New Testament. You just bear with me. I, my allergies are acting up, but I'm going to preach through this whether I have the sniffles or not. So thank you very much. I hope they can edit the, uh, the tape a little. <laughs> so believe is mentioned 19 times in the Old Testament and 124 times in the New Testament. So that right there lets you know that God intends for you to believe. He intends for you to understand that the life of the Christian is a life of belief. Uh, that is why people who believed in Jesus were called believers. That believers are those who have made their decision to follow Jesus Christ, to be a follower of Christ, and to have faith in Jesus, and therefore believe not only in Jesus, but to believe what Jesus has said and what Jesus has promised. Now, here's the thing. I believe in the English language, we get believe mixed up. In the root word of believe in the Greek and in the New Testament, it is the same root word as faith. But we in our modern English tend to use believe in a different way. So go with me for a moment. Think about the time when the weatherman, say last night, says that we have a weather forecast of about 45% chance of rain on tomorrow. Later, when we're talking to our friends about some activities that we might do, we might say something like, 
I believe it's going to rain today. Okay? Uh, we use believe in that sense to mean I think, I speculate, sometimes even I hope. I'm not totally sure, but I believe that's right. You know, if my memory serves me, I believe and that is not what the Greek sense of believe means. The Greek sense of believe and belief are the same as faith. And it means to have confidence in God. In general, in the Greek, it would be to have confidence or belief in something greater or something else. But as the Christian understands, believe is to have a confidence and a trust in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So then as I look at um, um, belief and faith and understand that they come from the same Greek word, I even come to realize that faith, at least in the King James Version of the Bible, occurs 245 times. That lets me know that God is saying, you've got to believe me. You've got to have faith in me. And the scripture that we're meditating on for this month as a church is, he that comes to God must first believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, God intends as we walk this walk, as we live this life, we have got to be people of faith who believe God who trust God, that regardless of what's going on around us, regardless of the situations and the inexplicable circumstances of our lives, no matter what the health challenge, no matter what the mental health challenge, no matter what the financial challenge, that we believe God. I went to college in uh, Columbus, Ohio at the Ohio State University and my dear friend that I met my first year in college is here and there was an evangelist out of Indianapolis which is where her mother is from. Her name was Mother Mildred Boyd and Mildred Boyd would always say, I believe God. <laughs> oh, it wasn't just I believe in God, I believe God. God and how she knew this God is because she was in relationship with God through our Lord Jesus Christ filled with the power of the Holy Spirit she stayed in her word to know the nature of God to see how God operated and to see God operating in her life she was a woman of faith and she had testimonies and that's I believe is what God wants us to get to a place in God that regardless of what's going around us, we say, I believe God. I stand flat-footed on this podium, on this platform, and I can say, I believe God. Mm. See, our life in Christ is this life of the new covenant of grace and love that is based on faith. It's our ability and our actions that demonstrate we believe God through our Lord Jesus Christ. One leadership coach that I work with told me a story about her son who was battling a life debilitating uh, addiction. He was addicted to drugs and she's a woman of faith. The husband's a woman of faith. They were ministers and of course I can only imagine <clears throat> Excuse me, I can only imagine that they wondered how did this happen in our family? We're good God fearing um, ministers of the gospel, and our son is strung out on drugs, and they'd get him help and he seemed to go back. And 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 um they ended up going through Al Anon. How many know what Al Anon is? It's a support group for those who have addictions in their family because addictions and other types of illnesses both physical and mental affect the entire family system and so they went through Al-Anon and they were given uh, a, a reminder because I'm sure they wondered well um, how come we can't get him healed uh, and we know God is able and how come he can't get the, around this and I was going through a situation with a family member that um, was diagnosed with one of those inexplicable cancers and uh, I gave scriptures and, 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 and prayed and had my prayer team and we're going to talk more about our strategy for breaking through in a moment um, and and I got to the point that as I was sending scriptures almost every day 
I just wanted to see that, Lord, this thing is going to turn around, you know, based on the word immediately. And at one point, the family member got really low. Um, the counts in, in this person's body went so low, he was hospitalized. And, and, and I'm like, God, but we're, 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 we're giving the word, we're giving the word. And, and God began to remind me that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do by believing God and standing on the word, but I don't control this. And what the coach began to say is what they taught her in Al-Anon is, I did not cause this addiction and I cannot control this addiction. And she being the woman of faith that she is, she added and said, but I can surrender it to the Lord Jesus Christ who can. So whether it's a physical illness, a mental illness, an addiction, or long-term unemployment, what you have to say to yourself is, I did not cause this situation. I, I cannot control this situation, but I can surrender it to the Lord Jesus Christ who can. He can turn it around. He can move mountains, but he'll do it in his own time frame. So the first step then to break through faith is to believe with all your heart that God is able and God is still in control and that God loves you and God has a plan for you and God is with you in good times and bad times and God does not pull a disappearing act when trials come. See, too often we will attribute to God some of the behaviors and, and, and conditions that other people, when times get rough, you know, they expect, okay, I'll hang with you for a couple months, but you still come to them after about three months with the same prayer request. Some folks are going to be like, see ya, you know, I'm busy. They won't answer the phone, caller ID, you know, they block you on Facebook and Twitter and other things and Instagram, you know, Snapchat, you know, that's how people do, but God doesn't block you. God doesn't disappear. <laughs> God doesn't turn his back on you. God doesn't uh, leave you because God said, I will always be with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And, and I, I'm going to be with you in trouble. As a matter of fact, he told us in one of the uh, prophets that if you go through the fire, I'm going to be with you. You go through the flood, I'm going to be with you. And that's really the life of faith is to know that God is with us regardless of what we go through. So yes, first lesson, first lesson is that we have got to believe with all our heart that God is able. Secondly, we see in verse 3 that this person, this paralytic man, his faith uh, was joined with others who believed. So you've got to join your faith with others who believe. It says in verse 3 that four men carried the paralytic man. In other words, he had his support system. And I wondered, I said, Lord, do you think he asked the other four men to get him to Jesus? He knew he needed to get to Jesus. Or do you think they did an intervention and said, now look, you've been laying here long enough. We understand that you can't move, but we heard there's a man in town in Capernaum. As a matter of fact, he's staying at Peter's house, and we hear all these people are coming flooding to him. Did they do an intervention and get him to Jesus, or did he just go on his own? I don't know, but here's one thing I know about us today. Whatever you are going through, you need to find you some people who can pray with you and join in faith with you. And if you are somebody who sees a family member or a loved one going through and they don't seem to want to move and can't get out of it, then you might need to do an intervention. Now, you need to be prayerful. I don't want you going to them and they knock you upside the head. But you need to pray for strategy about how God gives you the word to share with them because you can't force anyone to God. But when they are ready, all I know is when a person is ready, they'll be open to the things that God is sharing through you for them and that together you can go to God in faith. You've got to join your faith with others because faith is not a solitary endeavor. We often think in an individualistic culture that I've got to have this faith. I pray. I do this. That's why not too many of us uh, come out to prayer meetings or not too many of us are on prayer calls and, and we get to church late because we don't think the worship collectively is important. But faith was never intended to be an individual endeavor. Faith is part of the body of Christ, and my faith and my testimony, my praises get added with yours, and collectively they go up to God, and they create an atmosphere where God can move in our midst. 
honey, and Sister Valencia was singing her song. I, yeah, I started dancing. As a matter of fact, we uh, did a home going for my aunt on last week, and, and they pulled out on Sunday morning another old song that said, uh, um, everywhere you go, there is trouble. Everywhere you go, there is tribe. Everywhere you go, there is something that bothers you, but my God is standing by. How many know that sometimes you got to pull out those old songs, and, and we don't always know the hymns the way, uh, or a lot of young people don't know the hymns that some of us know, but those things got us through, but it wasn't that we got through as individuals on our own. We got through in a community of faith where we prayed together, we praised together, we lifted up God together, and when I saw you getting your breakthrough, that encouraged me that my breakthrough was on the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Faith was not to be a uh, solitary endeavor. When these trying times come, you've got to find you some other believers who can join their faith with yours and carry this situation to the Lord in prayer. Now, I'm going to give you two tips on, I'm calling this putting together your breakthrough team. So the first thing you want to do with your breakthrough team um, is know who not to put on your team. You don't put on your breakthrough team complainers. Mm, I can't have you complaining. I can't have you fussing because God hasn't answered fast enough. I can't have you complaining that God hasn't healed us fast enough or you don't have enough money. Nope, nope, no complainers. Uh, we also don't want people who post everything on Facebook and Twitter. And, t and, and what's the other ones? Twitter, Facebook. And I know some of you are watching this on YouTube, but Snapchat and Instagram. I have a, a relative who's going through something and he put his little breakthrough team together and, and unfortunately he left out a relative. And we were like, okay, you sure? He said, yeah, because they put everything on there. When they go through, they, it's on there. Uh, so I'm just saying, you want to make sure that folks who tend to put all the negative complaints out there, people prone to emotional reaction. Now, what that means is, because uh, there's going to be some times in these struggles that you have, that sometimes it's going to look worse than it looks better. And that lets you know that there are going to be times that it looks bad and people who are prone to emotions will walk by sight and when it looks bad, they'll start speaking bad and they're about speaking what they see. But when it goes down is the time that you've got to more than ever before speak the word of God, pray the word of God, and begin to continue to see yourself on the other side of that challenge. I, 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 there's some people in here that I know, I'm not going to call their names, but I know they went through in their, their trial with uh, the treatments that they had. And they let Pastor and I know we prayed in faith with them, we gave scripture, but they didn't need somebody at that point putting them in the grave. Because some people, when you go down and it looks like you get worse faster than you're looking better, then they have you in the grave. And, and, and you know, and, and, and you want to watch people who give prayer requests really as an occasion to gossip. Lord, now we are um, going to put this person on that prayer request because here's what's going on. And they give you all the details of what's going on in the name of prayer request. No, 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 no. We don't want them on the team. And if you see yourself in any of those, I'm not trying to point fingers. I'm not even trying to make you feel bad. It says, check yourself. It says, adjust your behaviors because you do want to be on somebody's breakthrough team. But notice that if you're not being asked to be on the breakthrough team, begin to check why. Because when you need a breakthrough, you're going to need to be able to pull a team together and you want to be able to find these people who can have that faith with you and you don't want to wait till you go through this challenge to begin to build your faith we want to build this faith right now so who do we want to put on our breakthrough people who know how to pray strategically. I've shared many a time the story that when I was uh, diagnosed with, uh, first of all, they thought it was a, a um, I can't even remember what the thing is called on my ovary, but the second time I went back 
for the uh, ultrasound. They thought it was a mass. And I was supposed to go to a meeting that night. I was down at Northwestern Hospital. I was supposed to go to a meeting. I canceled the meeting. I said, no meeting is more important than me getting before God. I got on my face before God and I prayed. And I said, God, what are we going to do? They think this is a tumor right here on this over. What am I going to do? God gave me three, four people to put on my breakthrough team and gave me the strategy. This is what we're praying for. One of the people he gave me was uh, one of our male intercessors that was a good friend of all of ours. He said, Doc, why don't you call my wife's um, gynecologist? And I did. And expecting to leave a message, and I was heading out to San Francisco the next day, so I expected to leave a message, but she was in one of these practices that she happened to be in the office, and she picked up the phone. I had a conversation with her, what was going on, and she said, if you can fax over right now permission to get your records from your other doctor, I can begin to work on this, and when you come back from San Francisco, then you come on into the office. How many know that was strategic? It was all about timing. If I had waited the next day, if I had gone on to the meeting and, and put on a happy face and, and put on my professional business face, uh, and then the next day began to deal with this, that would have been me operating in my own mindset. But because I heard God say, get on your face right now, do this, he gave me the people and one of the persons had the strategy for moving forward. The answer to all that is also that sometimes on your strategic team, you need a good professional. Uh, uh, some of us, when it comes to, uh, now I'm a firm believer that God is sovereign. God is able to heal. I grew up in a church that we believed in healing. We saw God heal. But I also believe that God uses medical um, professionals, psychologists, and psychiatrists, and counselors because God works through them. All healing comes from God. So this particular doctor was a believer. How many know she was a member of one of our churches? And she not only walked with me through that situation, but she was able to literally um, discount that there was any cancer even before she went in to take out the tumor. She was able to do a test. How many know that was revelation from God to tell her what to do? That's, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. So you want, uh, uh, you're looking for uh, uh, employment. Uh, yep, get somebody who can pray with you. Somebody's been through it. They have a track record of praying. But also find you a good employment agency. Uh, ask for the good um, um, recommendations on the internet of those that have used successful uh, job search sites. Uh, there are people, recruiters out there who are looking to place folks. A lot of us don't have the insights into that. Um, if there's some depression and some sadness in the family. Uh, uh, find some good counselors that can help talk you through it. And sometimes some of the issues that we face are of a biologic nation that you might need some um, medicine to get the um, brain chemicals straightened out. We don't like to often talk about that in the church setting, but all that is part of the breakthrough team. You know good and well, if you broke your foot, you'd be going over to the doctor to have an x-ray. And why, if you break something else in your life, your heart, your mind, your soul, why are we not finding the people who God can send us to to help us with these breakthroughs? So who else do we put on the team? You want to have a people who have a track record of praying people who are in relationship with you and that you can trust with sensitive information that won't go talking and telling everyone. And if you don't um, have folks like that around you now, then it's time for you to build a new friendship circle. Now, I'm not saying that you kick your other friends to the curb if they're not like this, but I'm saying when it comes to these dire breakthroughs, you gotta build your team together. If you're on ministry teams together, I call my, uh, the women's leadership team together and we pray weekly now because what we had seen happening is too many of us were facing these inexplicable situations and we said we're going to get together on a regular basis and pray and we've been seeing breakthroughs and growth in our own life. 
I challenge ministry leaders in this church, begin to pray with your leadership teams, not just about the strategy for your meetings and for your ministry, but for the people on the ministry, because our ministries will only be as strong as the people who are leading the ministries. Carve out some time to pray. If you've got to get up 15 minutes early, if you've got to get up early in the morning, carve out some time to pray together so that you can break through together. So then, what's the next thing? The next lesson on building breakthrough faith is they faith is they pressed through the barriers or obstacles. Now I think this is amazing that when these four men showed up with this paralytic man, they're carrying the paralytic man on his pallet or his mat. And they get to the house where they heard Jesus was staying. And just as a point of connection, when Jesus was in ministry in Capernaum, that was in Galilee, we believe that was Peter's house. It was the same house Jesus went to. And when he got there, Peter's mother was laying sick with a fever. And Jesus laid hands on her and healed her. And she got up and cooked dinner for him. They said he went off and did other ministry. And they said he returned to Capernaum. And we believe it then was at Peter's house that he came to. And in other words, Peter's house became his headquarters. Folks got word that Jesus was back here in Capernaum. And they said folks began to throng and crowd to him. Because they believed that Jesus was this miracle worker, this healer that could heal their diseases and their issues. And all of the gospel writers attest that he went about teaching and preaching the gospel, healing their diseases, casting out demons. And that's just what Jesus did. And how many know that when you find a way to the Lord in our lives, even now, you're going to share it with others. Honey, when I have gotten a strategy that has helped me get through a particular situation that was dire, I'm going to share everything I know to help you get through it. And so that was happening right then and there. So by the time the four men came with the paralytic man, they said that the house was running over. So I imagine Jesus was in the house praying, teaching, talking, and people had crowded in the house. They were in the doorway and they were even on the outside trying to push their way in or waiting for someone else to come out. See, they didn't have jumbotrons and they didn't have microphones that they could put up the jumbotrons on the outside of the house so people could see. These were fake people who were expecting something from Jesus and they couldn't get in right there, but they had to wait their turn. But it amazed me that these four men with this paralytic did not wait their turn. They did not let the crowd be a barrier. They did not let the crowd be a distraction. Instead, they found a strategy to get their friend to Jesus. That's why you've got to have people on your team who pray strategically because they might get creative with some things they have you do. They'll get creative because when it comes straight from God, it might not be anything you've heard before. It might not be anything you're familiar with but if it can line up with scripture then you know that that strategy is something that you need to do because it's part of your prayer time so lo and behold they they got the man up on the roof and in those days the houses were I imagine like little huts but they were houses that had thatched roofs and they had stairs on the outside so they carried the man on the outside of the house up to the roof and the thatched roofs would have been made with leaves and straw and other things and they ended up digging through and uh, taking out large clumps of the roof until they broke through. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to dig till you break through. Uh, look at your other neighbor and say, you got to pray till you break through. You got to press till you break through. You got to keep on till you break through. And, and the four of them broke through and they let the man down and they set him right in front of Jesus. I am amazed at that story that they did not let the crowds, they did not let the door, they did not let a tradition, they did not let the rules, they didn't let the housing code, they didn't let anything keep them from getting their friend to Jesus. They broke through on behalf of their friend and that friend 
then as he was laying there, the Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. I need you to look at that for a moment. In other words, uh, uh, Jesus saw their persistence and that to the very fact that they let the man down in front of him through the roof, I can see Jesus now looking up, then looking down, looking up. And of course, because he was Lord, he knew what they had done. But I believe he used it as an object lesson. He said he saw their faith and they healed. Now, first of all, when it says he saw their faith, it was collective. It was plural. Remember, again, it's important to have people praying with you. But the other thing is they saw, he saw their faith. Your faith is observable. In other words, when you really believe God, you're going to do something to show that you believe God. It's observable. Uh, people can witness it. Uh, and, and what I like about that, uh, um, Jesus makes this idea of faith explicit. Uh, he uses this object lesson that is more implicit to build upon something that he teaches throughout the book of Mark. In Mark, believe is mentioned 15 times, about 15 times. And in very explicit lessons like Mark 9, 23, Jesus said to him, a different person, if you can can believe all things are possible to him who believes. In another time in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he says, for shortly I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. He goes on in verse 24 and says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have have them. These were all explicit lessons on faith or on believing. But in today's lesson, Jesus uses this man's actions to show that they had faith. That's why James could pick it up later and said, faith without works is dead. If you truly believe that God is able, then you've got to get up off your seat of do nothing and do something that God has said to show that you believe God. How many know that this man and his friends showed that they believed God and God honored it and saw their actions and honored their faith? What are you doing today that demonstrates, God, I believe you. God, I trust you. Do you give up because it's taken a long time for the prayer to be answered? Do you give up when God doesn't answer quite the way you want? Or do you continue to trust God and recognize that there are going to be ups and downs? There are going to be mountains and valleys in my life, but I am not going to have a roller coaster faith. I'm not going to have a roller coaster set of emotions that one day I'll be up and one day that I'll be down, but I'm going to be steadily believing you, God, that I know there are going to be things I'm going through and going through right now that are inexplicable. They're troubling. They're dire. But like the three Hebrew boys that I know you are able, but if you don't answer it quite the way I want you to answer it, then I'm still going to be a believer. I'm still going to hold on to my faith. I'm still going to trust you, God. I still know that you've got a plan for me. I still know that you've got to work for me. I still know that you you love me. I still know that you got me. I still know that I'm your child and you're my God and together we'll get through this thing. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and give him glory. Yes. Final tips. Final tips. Because sometimes it's going to look worse on the outside. Sometimes when you think something, you know, we grew up, unfortunately, with some of the folks who, you know, name it, claim it, and only ask one time. That is so not biblical. Jesus said, ask, and it shall be given to you. But the tense of that ask is ask and keep on asking. Keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. Because it's about your relationship, and God is someone through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit within you that you can talk to on a daily basis. Can you imagine 
just asking God once for something and then not talking to him about it ever again? I can't even fathom that. That if I'm in this close relationship and it is a life of faith, I can talk to God about anything. And he does not get weary about me continuing to ask and talk and lay before him or journaling about it or writing it out. Right? So here's some final tips for you. You've got your team together now. You're praying about your team. You're going to put your breakthrough team together. You're praying about who's going to be on it. You're watching your word. You're, you're, you're getting your own faith together. You are going to lay before God for yourself. And you're going to ask God to check you with your complaints and, and your negativity. Right? Right? Because we're going to support one another. So the next thing you've got to do is watch your words. Watch your words. You've got to align your words with the promises of Scripture. You've got to align your words with the promises of Scripture. I was blessed to do a... a a speaking engagement on yesterday for some teen girls, professional women who mentor teen girls who are from more disadvantaged schools and homes, and they're doing a marvelous work. And I got to speak with them, and we talked about building your confidence. And one of the um, professional women talked about having um, a daily, she speaks affirmations to start her day because those are positive words, and, and I applaud that. But I want you as believers to make sure your affirmations are based on Scripture. Because the scriptural component or the scriptural principle is confession of faith. It comes from the word homologia, and it's about confessing or saying the same thing that God says. So when you are going through a situation in which you need healing, you need to confess that by his stripes I am healed. And you need to be able to say, according to Jeremiah 30, 17, I will restore health to you, says the Lord. You've got to go in scripture and find those scriptures and those words that are your promises, whether they're for your finances, whether they're for your physical healing, whether they're for your emotional or mental healing, whether they're for your social healing. You find those words in scriptures and you begin to confess those things. You begin to talk so that when the enemy comes in, because now don't ever think for a moment that the enemy's not going to come in and begin to tell you, uh-huh, see, uh, ain't nothing happening and you're crazy and you're this and that. And when the enemy does that, you've got to say, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That your words have got to line up because the trick of the enemy will be to make you doubt that God is on your side and will even make you doubt that God loves you. But that's when you've got to line your words that God said in his word that God loves me with an everlasting love and with loving kindness he'll draw me out. He said what can separate me from the love of God? He says nothing in all these things I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved us. Watch your words. Watch your words. Align them with scripture. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I like to give it what, uh, you know, Bishop Talbert Swan came and said he had first T three and five. Well, this is uh, um, the, the new J king version of the bible he says let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart align with the words of god let it align with your words god so that i'm speaking the same thing that you're speaking secondly you got to persevere keep pressing even when the breakthrough takes a while god never promised you an overnight breakthrough what he promised you is that he's sovereign and he'd be with you look at job look at all the people in scripture he promised you he'd be with you to the other side, but didn't give you a timing. He doesn't even give us the timing of when he's coming back for us. So our need for control is for us to set the time. We set appointments. We set the length of our meetings. We set the length of everything. And God has said, you are not going to control me and you are not going to put me on a time schedule. Because what I'm building in you is character. I'm building in you faith. I'm building in you perseverance. I'm building in you. I'm growing you up. And then give God the glory. While you're going through, give him the glory. When you get through your breakthrough, give him the glory. When somebody else is going through, give him the glory. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand to your feet right now. 
stand to your feet. And we're going to practice this breakthrough faith. The first thing I want to do is I want the altar team to come and the praise team to come back up. We're going to create this atmosphere. The first thing I want, though, is to make a call to discipleship or salvation. For anyone who has not received the Lord Jesus as a Lord and Savior, who has not um, come to him, who's not made that public confession, who's not even um, wa walking with him, if you, this is your invitation to come down. And I want every eye to be closed right now. I want every eye to be closed right now. And I want you to just put that down for a moment. Is that, take it down, take it down. What I want you to do is every eye closed and every head bowed. Yes. If there's one who needs to receive the Lord Jesus and you want to give your life to him right now, I want you to come forward. I want you to come forward right now that I might pray with you and walk you through the sinner's prayer, that you're dedicating your life to him right now. Is there a young person? Is there an older person? Is there one? Thank you for joining our broadcast today. For additional information, please visit us on our website, our Facebook page, or Twitter.